Hello everyone, this is Latasha Blanton from the Real South Africa Travel and Tourism. And you're gonna have the opportunity to travel with Phil Scott to... Sunny South Africa. You guys are gonna have the opportunity to come to Johannesburg and you guys are gonna be coming to Durban. And we're gonna set it up perfectly. It's gonna be like a luxury experience for you guys. At the same time, you're gonna be getting some culture. And of course, you're gonna get an opportunity to talk to Phil, hang out with Phil, and get his views on Africa and South Africa. You're also gonna get an opportunity to explore the lifestyles here that are available in South Africa. And we're gonna do all that for you in an amazing 10 days. We do hope that you go to the website and book because we do look forward to seeing you here. Absolutely, our website is therealsouthafrica.com. Go there, scroll down, you'll see a picture of Phil and just go ahead and book there. So we'll see you here in what we like to call sunny, sunny South, South Africa. Africa. Haitian police chief arrives in Kenya and this comes ahead of the scheduled Kenyan police deployment to Haiti. As you know, this move has been controversial, both from the Haitian side and the Kenyan side. People are not very pleased and happy with this decision. For one, this is funded by the US. Secondly, UN approved it. Thirdly, this, the people, of Haiti have had foreign troops on their land for years, decades, and they haven't seen any change and they don't see any reason why 1,000 Kenyan police will change their circumstances. And not to forget the Kenyan police that are going to be sent, they don't speak French, most of them, they don't speak the local language in Haiti. So what exactly are they going to do if they're not going to be able to communicate? That is one other argument I heard coming from the people. But what people are paying attention to, and even Kenyans have been saying, wait a minute, the police is not really doing what they're supposed to do here. What you mean they're gonna go over there to Haiti in that situation? Well, case in point, you have one of our Kenyan sisters that's going to you know, speak on that because this is very disturbing, and we'll talk about some other news that's really, you know, are going along with that, but let's go ahead and roll that. How do you call yourself Pan-African? How do you position yourself as a Pan-African and then turn around and do the white man's bidding? So our president is sending our men to a new environment that they know nothing about, an environment that have militarized population, an environment that has a long history of revolutionary war. They're used to this. They used to be in battles and fighting for years. They fought U.S. interference for decades now. They've hardened, obviously. It's like when we are being colonized and at some point, we had to switch off our humanity to be able to fight. Our ancestors had to become ruthless. So obviously Haitians, the ones that are fighting, are obviously like that. And then our president thought it was a good idea to take our men there. So this is obviously going to be black on black crime. It is going to be our men fighting other black men when those men have been trying to fight off white interference for decades. Like, how can you call yourself a Pan-African and then turn around and do that to your own men? Even the Kenyan opposition leader spoke out against this and said, why are we sending our troops when there's a lot going on in Kenya already? And that's one point and one way to look at it. But let's not also forget that Kenyan High Court ruled against this move and they did not want to send the Kenyan police. But unfortunately, even with that being the case, the parliament went ahead. A Kenyan court on Monday temporarily suspended a government plan to send police to IT on UN-backed mission aiming to restore calm to the gang-invested Caribbean nation. The UN Security Council last week approved a Kenyan multinational security force for the troubled country with Nairobi promising 1,000 police officers. But a Nairobi court granted an interim injunction on Monday in a case brought by opposition politician Ekuru Okot, who argued that deployment was unconstitutional as it was not backed by any law or treaty. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is U.S. funding this deployment and U.N. approving and being happy to facilitate this. That is a red flag right there. Why? 
Why do you want to do this? Haitians have been protesting against the U.S. involvement. Do you remember when Antony Blinken and U.S. officials were talking about how they're gonna help Haiti in the beginning of this year? The Haitian people made it very clear that they don't want their involvement because they've seen nothing but chaos coming out of the U.S. helping them. Haitians are being vocal, are protesting, are speaking up, but no one is listening to them. They have been protesting for a few days now and they've been saying consistently that they don't want foreign intervention in their country. But unfortunately, as I said, no one listens to them. So US, along with the UN, are preparing to send troops to Haiti to help. But Haitians are saying, we want to come up with solutions ourselves. Do not bring your troops here. The last time your troops were here, it was chaos, there was destruction, so please leave us alone. Let me show you a little bit of their peaceful protest. We'll come back and discuss. In a nutshell, Haitians are not very happy with this. A lot of Kenyans on social media, as well as the opposition, including the court, did not want this deployment, but it's still going to happen because a certain, um, you know, nation, by that I mean US, wants it to happen and by all means necessary, they are going to make sure that it happens. But anyways, fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about this deployment. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know down below.